Hello, and welcome to this video on Torque. In this video, we'll just introduce what Torque is, what it's responsible for in terms of physics, and also, of course, how to compute a Torque. And we'll see some neat tricks uh, involved in that. So, what is Torque? Well, it's basically the rotational analog of force. So, all you really have to do is think about force was mass times acceleration, Torque is moment of inertia, times angular acceleration. So it is the thing, it is that actual the rotational force, if you will, that causes an object to rotate. It's actually built up from a force. And we'll investigate how you actually figure out what that torque is in a moment. But what this one says, of course, is a larger torque means you're going to be spinning up faster or spinning down faster. So you're getting a larger angular acceleration. So, in order to answer how you figure out something about torque, let's think of an everyday example. And the question that you might think is, well, why are doorknobs or handles placed in the location that they're placed in? So, you've got a hinge on one side, and we tend to put the handle on the far side. Is there a reason for that? And, of course, the way you open this is either pushing or pulling, applied right at that handle. And if you've ever had to open a door, as somebody else is walking through, you've probably tried to scoot back and you've moved your hand away from the handle, and you realize that if you apply the force somewhere closer to the hinge, that it's actually a lot harder to keep that door open. And maybe you've not done this one, but if you try sort of applying a force at some angle, even if you're applying it to the handle, that's still not as easy as just applying it directly perpendicular to the door at the handle. And of course, even if you've never tried this one before, I think we can all agree that this is not going to rotate the door. This is you trying to force the door into its hinge, which is certainly not going to rotate it and probably not going to do anything unless the door is very poorly built. So this doesn't seem to be generating torque. The one where you apply it perpendicular to the door does generate the most torque. And the other two, where you apply it closer to the hinge or at some angle, was generating torque, but not as effectively as applying the force right at the handle perpendicular. So why is that? How can we incorporate that into our model for what torque is? Well, here's that statement of what we've said. Just our observations so far, torque has to depend on the force that you apply. Certainly, if you push the door harder, it's going to open faster. But also, it depends on where you apply the force and the angle that you're using. And the way that we encapsulate all of that is through this model for torque. Torque is just R cross F, where R is the distance from the hinges. It's actually a vector, so what we mean there is the position vector of the point at which you apply the um, force. And the origin of that vector is the hinge, or pivot point, for this object. And then you cross that into the actual force vector that you're using. And that cross product then gives you another vector, which is the torque. So remembering what cross products do, that just means you're going to take the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F and multiply by the sine of the angle between them. And you'll take the direction from your right hand rule. So we could ask something like this, which of these forces exerts the largest torque? And not surprisingly, this is exactly the sort of thing that we just discussed. This one because it is in the same direction as our radial vector, which is just basically along the door in this case. That cross product gives zero, because there is no perpendicular part of the force. And remember, cross products are looking for the perpendicular part. This one is acting at some angle. So we'll take the sine of the angle. It's going to be less than 1. So it's certainly less than this torque. And this one, on the other hand, is acting closer. It's perpendicular, so the sine of the angle is sine of 90 is 1 for this force and this force, but this one's acting much closer. The radius is this short distance here, just to the arrow, whereas for the second one, acting perpendicular to the door, that distance is a much larger distance. So indeed, R cross F agrees with what we said in our simple intuitive description of what's going on. So let's go a little step further, and instead of just thinking about which one's going to be bigger, let's try and do a calculation. 
So officially, if we want to know the torque of this force F applied here, and there's some pivot point over here, so we've got a radius vector that looks like this, and then we apply our force there. We would like to know what this cross product, uh, or what this torque is going to be, and of course it's supposed to be a cross product. So we'll shift this guy over, and then we can see that we could do a little bit of trig to find the angle between them. So we could certainly write R times F times the sine of the angle between them. Okay, but there's an easier way here. And that easier way is to go back to our original representation and to think carefully about what we're doing. Remember, what all we care about is the perpendicular part of one vector with respect to the other, multiplied by that magnitude of that other vector. So if we look at this, we've already got the perpendicular part of R. That's the part of it which is perpendicular to F. So we'll take F as our reference. And this is the perpendicular part of R. So that r times sine theta is giving me just this side of the radius vector. And this is a standard trick. Okay? From this, what we see is what we can do is just take this force, we can move it along its line of action, so the direction in which it's acting, we can just move that back and forth until, for instance, it sits directly above our hinges. That's the same torque because the perpendicular part of the radius is still just this side of the triangle, which is still 1. So we can easily compute this cross product now. We don't even have to make reference to signs of anything. It's just basically 1, because that's the perpendicular part of R, times whatever our force is. So it's just F. Of course, the units aren't F, because that 1 is actually, say, 1 meter. So it's uh, F times meters is the torque generated by that force. And in fact, by any force acting anywhere along this line here, such that the perpendicular distance remains 1. Okay, so this trick is very handy in order to not only simplify things, but also to realize that anywhere along this line, the answer is the same. Okay, so in summary, we've seen that torque, of course, is the rotational effect of a force because it's R cross F, and it then turns into talking about how much angular acceleration are you actually able to generate as a result of applying that force in whatever manner you've chosen to apply it at whatever location you're applying it. So what we meant by saying it's a rotational effect is, of course, the fact that a larger torque gives you a larger angular acceleration. And the things that it depends on, of course, is the magnitude of the force, the angle at which you apply the force, and how far from the pivot are you applying the force. And then we've seen that really the best way to calculate this is not so much by taking R, F, sine, theta, but actually realizing I can just grab the perpendicular component of any one of those vectors and multiply it by the other vector, or by the magnitude of the other vector.